Hi everyone, just going to be running through some examples again for the new book for Black Belts, Fixed Statistics using Minitab 18 Black Belt Edition. If you want to work along with us, you can download the data sets from my website rmk6sigma.com. So this is the second video on logistic regression. Previously I covered binary logistic regression and the binary fitted plot and covered some of the basics. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, go back and have a look at that one before we cover ordinal logistic regression. So as you know, the difference between regular regression and logistic regression is that in logistic regression, the response variable is categorical, whereas in normal regression, we have a continuous uh, variable as the response. And the difference between ordinal logistic regression and nominal logistic regression is that in ordinal logistic regression you have three or more levels of the response but they have an order in nominal logistic regression uh, they don't have an order so the example for ordinal logistic regression that i give on this front screen is the olympic games so we could set our response as being the medals that are available for the finalists uh, gold silver and bronze and they have an order and in fact, the example that we're going to be covering for ordinal logistic regression is to do with uh, Olympic, the Olympic Games and the medals. Now, if you want to work along, as I've said before, you can download uh, the example data from rmk6sigma.com and work along with this example, uh, or better still, buy the book and then work through the example. So this is example 7.3.2. Okay, so I'm just going to read out the example. Having read Matthew Syed's book Bounce, and I highly recommend that book, I wanted to test the theory that genius is made and not born, and that anyone with opportunity can become world class. I thought I would do this by analysing Olympic medal winners in the categories of gold, silver and bronze as my response. To make someone world class, they need to conduct a lot of purposeful practice. So one of the predictors I used is the number of hours of purposeful practice the medalist puts in every year and also the age that they started the purposeful practice. I wanted to somehow consider opportunity, but this was really hard to define. So I settled on gross domestic product GDP, a measure of their nation's wealth and used that as a categorical predictor. So GDP has two levels which relate to whether the medalist's home nation is high in the world rankings of GDP or medium. Help me test whether any of my three predictors have an association with the response and whether we can use the data to make conclusions about purposeful practice and Olympic medal wins. Then in the second part of the question display event probabilities against significant predictors in the most appropriate way. Here you can see I've already put the data into mini tab 19. Okay, so the book goes through with mini tab 18, so you might see slight differences in navigation, uh, but basically the, uh, the methodology hasn't changed between 18 and 19 for ordinal logistic regression. So just to explain this again, I've got three predictors, hours, age, and GDP, and I've got my response, which is metal. So it's a categorical response with three levels of gold, silver and bonds representing the medals available at the Olympic Games. Each row represents an athlete in whatever sport and let's say let's take row one for example so in row one that athlete used to put in 881.5 hours of purposeful practice each year. He or she started at the age of 3.8 years old and their nation had a GDP that was considered medium and that athlete got a bronze medal. So that's what each row represents. Okay, let's start the ordinal regression exercise now. We need to click stat, regression, ordinal logistic regression. As you know, the response is medal. I'm not gonna enter anything under frequency and I've got my three predictors and I need to enter under model. So we've got hours, age, GDP, and I've got a categorical predictor as well, which is GDP. So I just need to tell Minitab which one that one is. Okay, and then to run the regression model, just click OK. So now you can see I'm using the logit function, which is great because it gives me odds ratios. The response information tells me that I had 100 uh, rows of data. 28 were bronze response, 27 were gold, and mostly they were silver. Then I look at the logistic regression table and what I want to do here is see which one of my predictors were significant 
and when I look at the p-values none of them are significant so that wasn't quite expected but hang on a minute what I didn't do was tell Minitab the hierarchy of my response levels so I need to go back and do that now so I'm just going to maximize my data window right to do this we need to put our active cursor into column C4 anywhere it doesn't matter where right click then select column properties and then select value order okay then we want a user specified order and you can see here that was the previous order so Minitab thought that bronze had the highest level so we just need to change that order to gold silver bronze so I'm just going to take out bronze put it at the bottom of the list and then just delete the empty line click OK and that's told Minitab that the order of the response levels is gold silver bronze which is what we need in ordinal logistic regression now I can just run the regression model again don't have to change anything I can just click OK now we can go straight to the uh, logistic regression table and look at the p-values yep so we can see that hours is significant age isn't with a p-value of 0.139 and GDP is significant as well although only the medium level is showing there so I need to rerun the regression model and remove age okay so now we can go through the results in detail so we've got our significant predictors now we've got hours which represents hours of purposeful practice and GDP which really represents opportunity so the question is how does purposeful practice and opportunity change standings in the medals tables well to interpret that we need to look at the odds ratios an interpretation of odds ratios is different for categorical predictors and continuous predictors and it just so happens we've got one of each so let's have a look at those one at a time starting off with continuous predictors the first thing to know is when you look at the numbers in the column for hours which is our continuous predictor the numbers are quite high so here we've got 800 and some of them go up to the thousands as well and our coefficient for hours is very low but it's positive so this means as the number of hours of purposeful practice increases the probability of going up the table whether that be to, from bronze to silver or silver to gold increases but it's the actual odds ratio that tells us how much it increases by so we've got an odds ratio of 1.00 so that means for every single hour of purposeful practice that we go up by the probability of going up the medals table increases by a factor of times 1.00 so if you know your maths you know multiplying by one doesn't change the value at all so what am I saying does it mean that there's no change well because we know that the number of hours is very high maybe we need to investigate to more decimal places so I can have a quick look at the odds ratio and change the number of decimal places we're looking at so just right click on the odds ratio go to decimal places and let's try six decimal places so there you can see the value has changed to 1.003160 so for every hour of purposeful practice that I go up by we do get a small change in the probability of going up the medals tables and it changes by a factor of times 1.003160 right let's have a look at our categorical predictor G GDP two levels medium and high and the odds ratio is 0.1936 now the interpretation of odds ratios for categorical predictors is different so let's have a look at a breakout slide so this is what the odds ratio for categorical predictors looks like so the 0.19 is actually a ratio so it's the ratio of the probability of going up the medal table with GDP set at level medium divided by the probability of going up the medal table with GDP set at level high so if you went from medium to high you would actually increase your probability by a factor 
of 5. And conversely, if you went the other way, from high to medium, which is what the odds ratio is telling us here, you would have a multiplica multiplication factor of 0.19. So that's quite a significant change between those two levels. Let's have a look at what else we've got in the session window. So we've got the test of all slopes equal to zero. So this tells us that at least one of our predictors is significant, which we kind of know already. Then we have the goodness of fit tests, which is a measure of how well our data fits the model. So in this case, the null hypothesis is that the data fits the model well. And because our p values are high, we cannot reject the null which is good for us. That means we have a good model. And we've got the measures of association. So uh, Minitab has created a model and it's looking at how well that agrees with the data that we have. Uh, so we have 75% concordant pairs and only 24.3% discordant. So there's only 24% disagreement with the actual data that we have and the model that Minitab has produced. So the last part of the question is to display event probabilities against the significant predictors. So what we need to do is get Minitab to store event probabilities for the outcome of gold, silver and bronze uh, for each of our rows of data. So I click on edit last, click on storage, then under event probabilities and or aggregated data, and for enter the data of number of events, which is our gold, silver and bronze, we enter three and then click on event probabilities because that's what we want stored. Click OK and OK again. So what we get is event probabilities called for three columns called EPROB1, 2 and 3. So that's gold, silver and bronze. So the probability of getting a gold under these conditions in row one of silver and of bronze. So now we need to display the event probabilities against hours of purposeful practice and GDP. So we're going to produce a graph to do that. And we're going to use the good old scatter plot. And aren't scatter plots great? So versatile. And what we need is the option with, with connect and groups. So click on the last one, click OK. And then our y variable is going to be the probabilities. So EPROB1, let's put these in now, EPROB2, and then EPROB3. And then they're always going to be against hours. And then the categorical variable is, of course, going to be GDP. So we've displayed both our significant variables uh, on the scatter plot. Click OK. So one thing to remember now that the data that's being displayed, so this is the model that Minitab has produced. It's not displaying the actual data of metal that we had in our data window. So let's have a look at the graph of EPROB1, which is the gold medal. So as we know, you increase your hours of purposeful practice and the probability of getting a gold medal goes up. Looks like you can hit over 90% if you put in about 2,000 150 hours of purposeful practice and in terms of opportunity if the your original country was had a high GDP you can see the difference in probability of getting a gold medal increases significantly so looking at the scatter plot for the silver medal let's start off with high GDP first so your maximum probability of getting a silver medal which is when you're putting in about a thousand hours of purposeful practice and any less and your probability starts to decrease, probably because you're more likely to get a bronze medal. Any more than that and the probability of getting a silver medal starts to decrease, again, because you're more likely to get a gold medal. Now you can see the difference if you've got a high GDP original country. So to get the equivalent probability of getting a silver, you'd have to put in about 600 hours more practice. Finally, for the bronze medal, you can see it's where GDP is medium. That's where the event probability is the highest. And it starts off at a value of about 550, I say, with the highest event probability. And as you increase purposeful practice, you've got more chance of getting a silver and then a gold. So that concludes the example. I hope you learned a lot from it. Thank you very much. See you next time.